electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers? Thank you. Madam Public Advocate. Please take your seats. Please close the black back doors. Quiet in the chambers, please. Everyone, please take your seat. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Please be seated. Roll call. Quiet in the chambers. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Cornegie. Here. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Espinal. Eugene. Gibson. Jonai. Gradenchik. Holden. Kalos. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Levin. Levine. Mizell. Menchaca. Brannon. Carnegie. Uh, the Brooklyn delegation is still meeting, but on behalf of them, they're all on their way. So Thank you're, you. ca you're calling out attendance for my entire delegation who's on its way. <laughs> Thank you. So Brooklyn's not in the house. No. <laughs> <laughs> Miller. Present. Adams. Thank you. Three away. <laughs> Moya. Here. Perkins. Yes. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Richards. Present. Lander. Here. Rivera. Menchaca. Presente. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Present. Deutsch. Here. Traeger. Ulrich. Here. Mizell. Ballone. Van Bramer. Here. Williams. Jaeger. Matteo. Combo. Here. Speaker Johnson. Here. Thank you. I apologize, but to maintain quorum um, today, I cannot uh, grant any early excusals, and so I apologize in advance. Please rise for the invocation. <clears throat> the invocation will be delivered by Bishop Dr. Annette 
Lazarus Rose from Bethesda Healing Center at 167 East 98th Street from the borough of Brooklyn. Good afternoon, everyone. Our Father in heaven, we come before you this afternoon with full understanding that you are Lord and we are mere humans. Bearing this in mind, we are committing our ways to you, asking for direction as we begin this journey of transacting business on behalf of the constituents of District 41 in this great city of New York. I thank you for all 51 council members, the speaker, Mr. Corey Jansen, and our public advocate, Letitia James, clergy, and all other New York City officials present. Your word declares in Proverbs 29, verse 2, that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked man rules, the people groan. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Councilwoman Elika Amphrey Samuel, because of her love for the people, the people will rejoice. I pray that you will continue to direct her and her team as they go forth. Like the daughters of Zalofa, may she have the strength and the courage to fight for the rights and the well-being of the people of New York, specifically those of Bedford Stuyvesant, Ocean Hill, Brownsville, East Flatbush, and the Crown Heights. Because of the disparities and injustices meted out for so long, may she always be an agent of change, addressing the mental, social, and economic injustices that our communities face daily. May she and her team strategize to build homes in our communities, create programs to further our education and productivity, improve our health and finances, ultimately making New York City one of the greatest places in this nation to live. And dear God, I ask that those of us who are called to the clergy will do our part to support her vision and participate readily in the upliftment of New York City. Help her, Lord, in her effort to practice law in the service of human need. This we ask in Christ's name, amen. Amen, please be seated. <clears throat> Quiet in the chambers. A motion to spread the invocation, Council Member Ambry Samuel. Thank you so much, that was um, very emotional for me. It is an honor for me. Excuse it me, a, it quiet is in the chambers. <clears throat> Thank you, we apologize, Council Member. <laughs> it is an honor for me and all the members within the 41st Council District and all the members here in the New York City Council and in particular the Brownsville community, to sit here and witness such an amazing prayer given by Bishop Dr. Annette Lazarus Rose, who has her congregation that is just around the corner from where my mom lives on East 98th Street and Blake Avenue. And I just wanna say when we watched that church be built, it turned into a sanctuary for so many families in the Brownsville community so many families from after school programs to summer programs you have done so much for our community and not just as the bishop and the clergy member but a strong woman a strong wife a mother and a grandmother dedicated to our people so i thank you so much for that prayer and it's again an honor for you to be here and i move that we spread the invocation today thank you thank you bless you pastor Adoption of minutes, Council Member Van Bramer. Motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of January 16th, 2018 and January 31st, 2018 be adopted as printed. Messages and papers from the mayor. 
M19, Preliminary Mayor's Management Report. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from City, County, and Borough Offices. M20 and M21, Comptroller Reports. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M22 through M26, various applications. Uh, coupled on a call-up vote, I'd like, I'd like to ask for a roll call vote on today's land use call-ups. And again, please be reminded that uh, no early excuses, um, ex excusals will be granted. I apologize. We need to get the hell out of here. Right. To maintain quorum. <laughs> In other words, to maintain quorum. Grudenchik, did you hear me? We need to get the hell out of here. That's no another comment. way to say it. Hey, Roll call vote. Donovan. Adams. Aye. Donovan. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Call Amprey Samuel. Amprey Samuel. <laughs> Carnegie. Aye. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Eugene. Gibson. Aye. Jonai. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. King. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Mizell. Yes. Menchaka. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. I vote aye on all. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Aye. <laughs> Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Williams. Aye. Jaeger. Matteo. Aye. Combo. Aye. Eugene. Is that aye? Yes, aye. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, zero negative. All quiet in the chambers as we now hear from the speaker, Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I am sick, so we are going to get out of here fast so I can go home and get into bed. Uh, but I would first like to uh, welcome the Trevor Project to City Hall today. I am proud to honor the Trevor Project for 20 years of extraordinary service and dedication to LGBTQ teens and young adults. As a gay teenager two decades ago, the Trevor Project helped really shape who I am today. Uh, they are the largest suicide prevention organization for LGBT young people in the country. And I'm thankful for the work that their staff does. If we could please give them a round of a hand. They're up in the balcony. And I want to thank them. I also wanted to uh, acknowledge Dylan Casey from the Land Use Division. Uh, Dylan's last day is Friday, as he'll be moving to California to advocate for fair housing and work on related policy issues. Uh, Dylan's work on behalf of the council these last three years has been of superior quality, and we thank him for his hard work, and we wish him all the best in sunny California. So I want to thank Dylan. Is he here? 
Dylan's in the back. I want to thank Dylan. He has been great to work with, so I'm really, really grateful, and good luck. So if, if folks could be quiet for a moment. Now on a heartbreaking note, on Monday, folks could turn their phones off. On Monday, tragedy struck in Park Slope in Brooklyn, and my heart uh, aches for the Park Slope community, and I express my deepest condolences to the families of two young children who were killed, four-year-old Abigail Blumenstein and one-year-old Joshua Liu. This is a devastating tragedy, and we must do everything in our power to further reduce traffic fatalities in our city. I want to invite Councilmember Brad Lander uh, to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Our, our community is shattered this week. Abby was a beautiful four-year-old girl who was described as smart and cheerfully curious about everything by those who loved her. Her mom is pregnant, and she was excited to be a big sister. Josh was an 18-month-old with a six-month-old little brother who was a darling little boy. Abby's mom, Ruthie Ann, is a Tony-winning actor. She's pregnant and still in the hospital, so I ask that you hold her in your prayers. And when she won her Tony a few years ago, she thanked her friend Lauren, Josh's mom, in her remarks. Like every detail is just shattering. Um, they were killed by a driver whose car had run four red lights in the last two years and been caught speeding in four school zones by cameras. She should not have had a license to be driving around. She stopped at a red light watched a car go by, and with the light still red and the opposite crosswalk full of people, accelerated into them, killing these two kids and, and hitting a few others. Um, the investigation is underway, of course, but we, we've done a lot in this chamber to try to make our streets safer, um, and we have, but boy, it doesn't feel like it's worth anything on a week when you lose these two babies. So I just ask that we all recommit to working together to keep reckless drivers off our streets. We've got a lot more to do there and to make our streets safer too. Um, and for now, just to hold these two families in your hearts. Thank you. So if folks could rise, we're gonna take a moment of silence. All rise. For the two babies that we lost and to all the victims and folks that are mourning. Thank you very much. Please be seated. So we're going to jump into our docket for the day. Uh, the council will vote to landmark properties in Manhattan and Brooklyn, which are the Interborough Rapid Transit IRT Company Powerhouse, located in Councilmember Helen Rosenthal's district. Many of you probably know it. If you drive up the West Side Highway, you see that old, beautiful building with those stacks. Uh, in the West 50s. Um, it's a gorgeous old building, and I am so glad that we're landmarking it um, today. We're going to landmark the Empire State Dairy Company buildings located in Councilmember Rafael Espinal's district, and 827-831 Broadway buildings, which is located in Councilmember Carlina Rivera's district. Uh, next, the council is going to vote on a package of legislation to better serve the needs of runaway and homeless youth. This is an important issue and one that hits close home uh, for me because in many cases, uh, young people from my community, the LGBTQ community, are thrown out on the street because of their sexual orientation. We must do everything we can to help our young people. And with that in mind, I sponsored introduction 410-A, which would require the Department of Youth and Community Development to develop a plan to provide shelter to all runaway and homeless youth who request shelter. This bill would also require DYCD to report annually on runaway and homeless youth. 
The next bill in this package is introduction 490A, sponsored by Councilmember Vanessa Gibson, which would require that runaway and homeless youth be permitted to remain in runaway and homeless youth shelters for extended time limits, doubling the permitted time in a crisis shelter from 30 days to 60 days, which is a big deal if you're a young person who's in a crisis shelter to double the length of stay, and extending the time in transitional independent living facilities from 18 months, granting an additional six months uh, to 24 months, another big, big deal. And the last piece, which I actually think is, is probably the, the most important part of this package of bills, is introduction 556A, uh, sponsored by Councilmember Richie Torres, it would require the Department of Youth and Community Development to include shelter services for homeless young adults uh, ages 21 to 24 as part of the continuum of care for one our way and homeless youth services. The reason why this is so important, and I'm sure Councilmember Torres will talk about this, state law, which the city lobbied for, granted us the ability to increase the age, raising the age allowed for young people to get these services. If you are 20 years old and you turn 21, you are kicked out of an RHY shelter and put into a DHS shelter. This grants us the authority to uh, let these young people stay in RHY shelters, which help them and get them back on their feet up to the age of 24. It is going to help so many young people who are homeless in New York City. I want to thank the staff involved, uh, Paul Senegal, Kevin Katowski, Andrea Vasquez, uh, Louis Children Brown, Jessica Ackerman, and Aisha Wright. We are also going to vote on Resolution 177, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Traeger, which calls on New York State, on the New York State Legislature, to amend the Penal Code, Section 130-05, related to the lack of consent for sexual acts, to add persons in police custody to the list of persons deemed incapable of consenting to a sexual act when it is a police officer. This is an important resolution, and I am really happy that Councilmember Traeger has shown leadership on this. The fact that this isn't on the books already is deeply disturbing and something that must be fixed immediately. I also want to, uh, where is uh, Councilmember Traeger? I also want to really recognize uh, the fact that when this incident happened in Gravesend in Councilmember Traeger's district a few months ago, he was the first leader to call and fi figure out the loophole that existed. The governor put this in the 30-day amendments. The Councilmember Traeger was on this issue before anyone else because of the rape, alleged rape, that occurred with two police detectives and a young woman who was in their custody. And he was at the forefront of this. He was pushing this. He was calling on the city to do this and the state to do this. And he did this long before the legislature or the governor decided to take action on this. So I'm hopeful, because it was put in 30 amendments, that it will be included. But the person who showed the real leadership on this out of the gate immediately was Councilmember Traeger. So when the state legislature fixes this and gets it right, the person who deserves the leadership chops on this is our friend and colleague, Councilmember Mark Traeger. I want to thank uh, the staff on this, Beth Gollum and Casey Addison, and that completes our uh, docket for today. I want to thank you all. Let's vote quickly and get back to our districts in this difficult weather. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you. Discussion of general orders? Seeing none. Report of special committees? None. Report of standing committees? Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, pre-considered intro 720 site safety training providers. Laid over. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 15 to LU 19, various applications. Approved with modifications and referred to City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. L, excuse me, LU 20 and Reso 231 Shh. through LU 27 and Reso 233 landmark designations. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered, excuse me, LU 28 and 29 zoning amendments. Approve of modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. 
pre-considered LU 30 and Reso 234 Campaign Finance Board Office. Coupled to be filed pursuant to a letter of withdrawal. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, M14 and Reso 235, approving the reappointment of Fernando A. Borquez, Jr., Conflict of Interest Board. Coupled on general orders. M15 and Reso 236, approving the reappointment of Anthony W. Crowell, Conflict of Interest Board. Coupled on general orders. M16 and Reso 237, approving the appointment of Salvatore Scabetta, Board of Standards and Appeals. Coupled on general orders, and before we keep moving on, I want to thank uh, Chair Kozlowitz uh, for chairing the hearing on rules on these nominations. She did a great job, and I really appreciate her leadership on this. Report of the Committee on Youth Services, intros 410A, 490A, and 556A, Homeless Youth Services. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled on general orders, and I would like a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Quiet in the chambers, and let's begin our roll call with Councilmember Landsman. Aye. Adams. Aye on all. Ampre Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Uh, aye on all. Uh, that's with the understanding that we're not considering LU 28 and 29. Is that correct? Yes. Thank that's you. correct. Aye on all. Brannon. Aye on all. Cabrera. Cabrera. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Carnegie. Aye on all. Deutsch. Aye on all. Diaz. Si en todo. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye on all. Eugene. Aye on all. Gibson. How about aye on all? Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lander. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye or no? Shh. Quiet in the chambers, please. Cabrera. Aye. Powers. Reynoso. Aye. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye on all. Rosenthal. Aye on all. Salamanca. Aye on all. Torres. Aye on all except uh, M14 Reso 235. I'm going to abstain. Traeger. With quick thanks to Speaker Johnson, Public Advocate, Chair Richards, my colleagues, uh, Anna Scaife, my Chief of Staff, Vanessa Ramon, uh, Deepa Ambakar, Josh Kingsley, and our colleagues in the State Assembly and Senate for supporting the resolution. Speaker Johnson, you were one of the first leaders to reach out to offer support to me and my district. I want to publicly thank you right back. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Ulrich. Aye. Yeah. Uh -huh. Valone. Aye on all. Van Bramer. Aye. Williams. Sorry, sorry, Jaeger. Matteo. Combo. Aye on all. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. That was a record. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm going home right all now. items on today's yeah. all items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero <coughs> negative, zero abstentions, with the exception of M14 and Resolution 235, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero negative, one abstention, and the revised land use call-ups were adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero negative. Our introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committee as indicated on the agenda. And now for discuss any dis discussion of the following resolution, Resolution 177, a resolution urging the New York State Legislature to amend the penal law, Section 130-05, 
to include individuals in police custody as being categorically incapable of consenting to sexual conduct with a police officer. Um, any speakers on this resolution? Council member? I, uh, I'd like to echo the speaker's remarks. Uh, I too was shocked that uh, this was not something that was already unlawful under New York State penal law. Um, as we know, it's- uh, Excuse me, it's Council Member, shh. We apologize, Council Member Yeager. As we know, it's unlawful for a corrections officer to have uh, any kind of interaction of that nature with somebody in their custodial uh, uh, or in their custody as a matter of ha the person not being uh, able to legally consent, even if there is consent by a yes. So the notion that uh, it's some kind of a defense that there was consent uh, because, you know, a police officer had these relationships, it's, uh, it's important for us to make our voice heard and ask, the, and ask the state to step in and to pass a law that makes it illegal. But what I do want to indicate as well is that when we talk about these cases with police every once in a while and you hear this, it's always important for us to note for ourselves and for the rest of the city that the vast majority, 99.99999% of police officers do their jobs well, do their jobs hard. They serve our community with pride and with dignity and with honor. And we should pass this, and I am grateful to Council Member Traeger for putting this on the agenda and passing this, but we should also keep that in mind as we do that. Thank you, Council Member Yeager. Seeing none other, all of those in favor of Resolution 177 say aye. Aye. All of those opposed? Any abstentions? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Uh, general discussion beginning with Council Member Ku. I will be very short now. This week we are celebrating the sixth anniversary of the open data Shh. law. Until, up until March 10, there will be different special events around the city for New Yorkers to discover, explore, and use of the city's vast wealth of open data. Since 2012, every city agency has contributed data to our open data portal, and the data sets grow every day. Open data demonstrates our commitment to a transparent, accountable, and less cynical government that takes pride in giving people access to information. Today, accessible data is used by everyone from students to professionals in an effort to influence policy and change in their local communities. So I invite you to all encourage uh, your constituents to take advantage of our city's groundbreaking efforts to empower them with information. I have a safe trip home. Thank you. Council Member Williams. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to uh, point out uh, two bills very briefly. Uh, one is a bed and breakfast bill that I'm working on with uh, Councilmember Cornegy, uh, many of, uh, and Councilmember um, Bell President Adams. Uh, there are many of our one or two family homes that are un unduly uh, targeted, even as we are trying to crack down on the very egregious Airbnb. Uh, and the second is a right to record that I am uh, reintroducing. Uh, it, it just gives a local right of action for our people's ability to uh, record law enforcement many folks may have seen the BuzzFeed article that was very disturbing uh, about uh, from 20, 2011 to 2015, at least 319 NYPD employees who committed offenses severe enough to merit firing were allowed to keep their jobs. And for clarity, that did come before Commissioner O'Neill. But it does lead to many of the things that um, myself and others have been saying. We have moved in a very good direction. I want to continue to applaud that. There are two areas we are, we are abysmal on. One is transparency and the other is accountability. We have to keep moving forward with that. Although we have unfortunately seen uh, that having uh, footage does not necessarily help with accountability, at least everyone is looking at the same thing. It does not create any new rights. It just gives a private right because if you had to push forward on your right with the Constitution, it is a much more onerous. So I would like my colleagues to please sign on to those two bills. And again, congratulations to Council Member Traeger for his resolution. Uh, I, I'm happy that the, the governor uh, followed the leadership of Council Member Traeger and this council on something that was ridiculous to begin with. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Torres. Thank you. I want to 
just briefly explain why I abstained from the vote approving the reappointment of uh, Fernando Bojorquez. Um, I have no doubts about his qualifications for the conflict of interest boards. I have no doubt about his personal and professional integrity. Um, but separate and apart from his, the merits of his individual appointment, I have a principled objection to fundraising on the part of conflict of interest board appointees. As far as I'm concerned, the conflict of interest board is and should be any political institution. It should have the appearance and the substance of political neutrality. And it's my opinion that fundraising among COIB appointees undercuts the appearance of political neutrality. So it's, a, it's not an objection to the individual appointee. It's simply a general principle for me. Thank you. Councilmember Chin. Thank you. I just wanted to bring my colleagues' attention to intro 620 and 621, two pieces of legislation that will help the city ramp up its efforts to control the New York City's rat infestation problem in large mixed-use uh, commercial and residential area, such as Lower Manhattan. Residents and tourists alike frequently see families of rats enjoying a buffet on the sidewalk. So last year, I joined Mayor de Blasio to announce a pilot program to place high-capacity big bellies, trash cans, in areas with a large numbers of rats. As part of this effort, I'm introducing Intro 621. This bill would require buildings within a rat mitigation zone that has nine units or more, which are required to have supers, to only take out garbage between the hours of 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. I'm also introducing Intro 620 to require businesses in the spring and summer season to clean the grease and other garbage juice off the sidewalk before they open. These simple solutions can deprive rats of further opportunity from freeloading off our garbage and to achieve lasting result, we all must be a part of the solution. I wanted to thank Chair Winoso for hearing these bills pre-considered on the Sanitation Committee yesterday. And I also want to thank Nicole Abin, the Committee Counsel, for her work on drafting this bill. And I urge uh, my colleagues to sign on. Um, we had to cancel our Lunar New Year celebration tonight because of the weather. Hopefully, we will reschedule as soon as possible so that we can celebrate. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Brennan. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be very, very quick. Today, I want to, I'm introducing uh, intro 619, which is designed to increase penalties on large corporate chains and businesses for failing to properly remove snow and ice uh, following a snowstorm. Most homeowners and small businesses take their snow shoveling responsibility very seriously. I have to go home and do that now. But some of these big business chains laugh at the thought of being slapped with a $100 fine. Um, failing to shovel their sidewalks creates a dangerous situation, as we all know. After a snowstorm, there's no excuse for there still to be snow and ice outside some of these very large corporate chains. And the bill uh, makes sure not to go after small businesses. So intro 619, thank you. Thank you. Council Member Traeger? Thank you, Public Act. Very briefly, as chair of the Education Committee, I'm proud to introduce a package. Excuse me, Council Member. We're still in session. Quiet in the chambers, please. We apologize. Sure. And again, uh, thank you to all my colleagues for their support and public advocate. Thank you for your public support as well on that thank resolution, you. which we appreciate leadership. As chair of the Education Committee, I'm proud to introduce a package of bills uh, today that would make the civil service exam process more accessible to graduating high school seniors and first time exam takers. One of my two uh, new bills, intro 672 and intro 671, would require graduating high school students to be informed about the city's civil service process so students have a deeper understanding of every option available to them and what they're working towards as they graduate high school. Increasing awareness about the civil service exam process and the careers associated with those exams can motivate our students to continue their academic careers knowing that there are more opportunities that will be available to them should they pursue additional degrees. The other bill would create a task force to examine ways the city could waive civil service exam fees for individuals taking the test for the first time. We are cultivating many bright and talented young minds in our city, and we want to encourage that talent to remain here and help us move forward. By raising awareness and creating opportunities for civil service exams and employment, this package of legislation can help us accomplish that goal, and I thank my colleagues for their time. Quiet in the chambers, please. Oh, we, so we have three more folks. We need to get the hell out of here because the storm is moving in fast. So folks need to speak. Do it very quickly. Councilmember Constantinides. 
On, on the strong urging of our speaker, I will forego my time. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Rose. I just want to um, briefly say, Council Member Van Bramen and I are introing um, 713, and it's to bring an ombudsman um, to D DYCD to provide um, oversight over the runaway um, youth population and to oversee emergency shelter transitional and independent living drop-in and other services for runaway youth. Thank you. Council Member Levin. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, just very briefly, I want to offer my, um, my sympathy and condolences to the families of Joshua Liu and Abigail Blumenstein uh, and to the broader uh, community for the um, tragic and senseless uh, killing of these two little children. Um, and um, my sympathies go to the families, and, and uh, uh, I urge uh, all of my colleagues in government uh, to do more uh, to prevent um, these types of tragedies from ever happening again and uh, sparing uh, other families from this uh, terrible, terrible uh, suffering and grief and tragedy. Thank, Thank you. you. May Abigail and Joshua rest in peace. Mr. Speaker, to close. We're getting the hell out of here. That's all she wrote. Get home safe.